We can also see this in terms of the kind of the three-dimensional structure. This is a little bit different way of looking at it. So if we look at, again, this is, I believe, a normal conditions. We see shallower thermocline. We see deeper thermocline in the Western Pacific, warmer water confined to the Western Pacific. If we go to an El Nino, we can see that warm water sloshing across, deepening of the thermocline in the Eastern Pacific. And this just kind of gives you a little bit different way of looking at this phenomenon of El Nino and La Nina. Again, it's a really important phenomenon because it affects us here, directly affects our weather, it's going to affect agriculture, it's going to uh, affect disaster preparedness, patterns of rainfall and precipitation, the drought we're currently experiencing, um, partly because of La Nina, is very real and it has very uh, catastrophic consequences for water use and all those different kinds of things. So these are really important weather, ocean, excuse me, atmosphere, ocean phenomenon because it directly affects us here in Southern California. One of the major points that I want to leave you with, this is uh, told as told by George Philander, is really trying to decide how to make a policy decision about predictions of El Nino and La Nina. And this is where you guys come in. Your understanding of El Nino and La Nina may help you prepare your family. It may help you vote a certain way. It may help you make decisions regarding funding certain things or not funding certain things. You may even be involved in a business that might be affected by El Nino or La Nina. And as Philander puts it, the greatest challenge is really to give appropriate weight to the uncertainty Scientists don't always have all the information that they need. And so it's really too serious a matter to be left just to the scientists and economists. It's really the responsibility of all of us because the policies affect all of us. It, the policies we adopt reflect our values. Much can be learned from El Nino, he says, but we need to do so in a hurry before we succeed in changing him. And of course, the effects of global warming on El Nino and La Nina are another area of oceanographic and meteorological study that are intensely debated. Whether global warming is going to create a permanent El Nino or whether global warming is going to create a permanent La Nina has incredible implications for climate here in Southern California. And there's some predictions that La Nina coupled with something called a cold regime, something we'll get into in more detail in chapter 14, a 20 to 30 year colder than average water temperatures in the eastern Pacific on top of La Nina is really creating what's called a mega drought conditions here in Southern California. And so again, two climate cycles making each other worse in a sense. We may be in for prolonged drought here in Southern California and even more so when La Nina comes on top of El Nino. And I'll leave you this with this one other thing. We haven't had an El Nino in Southern California in several years, and that has some scientists, well, maybe not worried, but puzzled, perhaps, because we usually get one every three or four years, if it's even a mild El Nino. So much like the big earthquake that we're overdue for, we're overdue for El Nino as well. So stay tuned, and we'll see what happens in our future weather and climate in Southern California. Of course, if you want to learn more about this, there is an excellent activity in the end of Chapter 8, Exploring El Nino Through Scientific Investigation. You can also check out the resources um, and the, uh, in this. And I put here the open ocean, but there's also a really good El Nino uh, video that's out that's kind of hard to get a hold of, but if you're interested in that El Nino and monitoring El Nino video, send me an email and I'll send you a link to it. Um, it's really an excellent look at the... Um, implementation of the Tau Triton Array and how El Nino and La Nina affect our weather here, uh, particularly in the western United States. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this sort of rapid and uh, overview of the interactions between the ocean and the atmosphere. As always, if you have any questions, please email me and you have a great day.